My name is Luke, and this is my Unreal Engine C++ tutorial series. I have been programming in Unreal for years, and I have noticed that there is not a lot of content surrounding Unreal Engine C++, so it will be my goal to provide the most clear and concise content as possible that not only explains to you what I'm doing, but why I'm doing it. This tutorial also assumes a basic knowledge of C++, so if you don't know your syntax or how C++ works at a basic level, I suggest you research that and then come back to these tutorials. One thing I want to cover before we jump into coding is developing your process of problem solving. First of all, you don't want to immediately delegate your problems or your bugs on someone else or something else. You want to be able to problem solve on your own. So before anything, try and figure it out on your own, iterate on the problem, level up your debugging skills, Try and figure it out any way you can, and if you can't, then move on to the docs, the Unreal Engine docs. They're great docs. I recommend bookmarking it to your web browser. And if you can't find anything in the docs, then I'd recommend going to Google. And after extensive searching there, I recommend going to Discord or Reddit to search through the posts there and get a more direct communication approach to solving your issue. Another important thing to remember is that the computer is almost always right when reporting errors, so that's why it is important to analyze what the error is, the exact error is, and understand why it's reporting it, because sometimes it might not make sense, but it makes perfect sense to the compiler or the linker, so understand that the computer is always right and never make changes to your code that is based on absolutely nothing. Always have a reason to make changes to your code. If you want to code Unreal Engine C++, you need to have an IDE. The two that I recommend are Sublime Text or Visual Studio. And you can download both of those from their respective sites that I am showing now. If you're installing Visual Studio, make sure to get the ReSharper extension. You can get one year free with a student email, or you can purchase that. For this tutorial, I will be using Sublime Text. So you can follow along with Sublime Text, or you can generate a Visual Studio project once we're in the engine, which is very simple. After you have your text editor installed, go ahead and boot up Unreal Engine into a blank C++ project and name it whatever you'd like. After we've generated our project, we need to set up Sublime Text. So navigate to our project folder and drag in the config and source directories, and then navigate to your engine source directory and drag that in. So we have access to all of the engine source code directly in our Sublime project. Now after that, there's one more thing we need to do, and that is remove the game mode source files and add in two folders, a public and private folder. After those folders are created, go ahead and drag in your project module name.cpp file into the private folder and your .h file into the public folder. There's one more thing to understand before we can start programming and that is Unreal Engine's basic class hierarchy. So everything in Unreal Engine is derived from a U object or almost everything I should say. Actor is one of the most popular classes that is derived from U object, and that is anything that can be placed in the game world. And U actor component, which is a component that can be added to any actor. You can make entire games by only interacting with U actor components, actors, and subsystems. Now, first thing we want to do is boot up into our blank C project and make a new level, new blank level. And go ahead and add in some simple lighting. So sky atmosphere, directional light, and exponential height fog. Every actor in Unreal Engine has to have at least one root component, which is a child of scene component, which defines the basic transforms of an actor. So the direction light component, exponential height fog component, all will derive from scene component. That is how these actors are allowed to have transform. Let's start off by doing something very simple. Let's drag in a cube 
And then if we see in the type in the world outliner, this is of type static mesh actor. So if we want to make a custom cube, for example, that has custom logic, we need to create a new C++ class from the tools menu. That's parent is static mesh actor. Now here we see public and private class types. This is the same as the folders we had before. Depending on what you choose, it will place it in either the private or public folder. Uh, this isn't important now. I will explain this later when we get to the build tools in the next video. But go ahead and hit create class and it will compile and make sure that it adds correctly to the project, which it should as long as you followed along correctly. Just as a quick side note, if you're using Visual Studio, you will have to go to the tools menu and click generate Visual Studio project before you can start coding. You may notice that the compile sound is really annoying, so if you want to get rid of that, go to Editor Preferences and just look up Editor Sounds, Disable Editor Sounds. Now once we've done all that, we can go ahead and open up our IDE and check to make sure that our cube was added. Now we can see that this is properly inherited from a static mesh actor. So if we go over to the actor.h file with control P, we can go down and see that there is a virtual method called tick, virtual void tick. Something important to note about the engine is that almost all the C++ coding that you're going to be doing is going to be working with event handlers such as tick or other virtual method overrides. It's also possible to have custom logic through delegates. So virtual methods and delegates are the two primary event handlers that we're going to be working with. Here, tick is defined in actor.h, so we know that this event is going to be present on every single actor we place in the world. The Unreal Engine developers have put comments above almost all of their virtual methods intended to be overridden, describing what the event does and what the parameters do. So we can go ahead and copy in our method here, putting in the keyword override so we remember that this is being overridden. One important thing to know about constructors in Unreal Engine is that they do not work anything like constructors in normal C++. Whenever your game boots up, a CDO is created for each U object, which is a class default object, and it's a master copy of the object for a specific class contained in the reflection system. So everything you put in the constructor is defaults. It's not code that is run when the object is spawned in the world. It is specifying defaults for the CDO of that object. In the virtual method ticks comments, it says there that we need to put a line of code into the constructor to make sure that tick is enabled for this actor. So if we go over here and copy and paste primary actor tick dot b can ever tick and set it to true, that should be all we need to do to make sure that this actor has ticking enabled. After we provide the definition for our tick function, we need to ensure that the super version of this method is called from the super class. So we specify that by calling super tick and then passing in delta seconds. The Unreal Engine developers want us to do this just in case there is any functionality that may be broken if the super version of this method is not called. What I have written down here is a UE log macro. The first two arguments don't really matter. The last two are a text macro and then an optional variable to pass in to um, the text macro for formatting. Um, we don't really need to go into that right now because this is all the functionality we need. So let's go back into the engine and search for cube guy and place actors, and it should be there because of it being registered in the reflection system since it's a child of U object. And we could set the static mesh here if we wanted to, but the preferred method or my method is um, deriving that class we just created in C++ as a blueprint. So let's delete that and make a blueprint class that is a child of cube guy. It should be registered here in all classes now. And then here we can specify the details of 
our CDO easier. If we step into here, we can see that it is a child of our cube class. If we set it to movable here, this is important for being able to move the cube. And then we can give it a static mesh and compile, save. And if we drag in our cube, hit play, and look at the output log, we can see that it is saying one, two, three, every single tick. So we've already got custom functionality in our custom cube in our child blueprint class. Now, what if we wanted to do something different other than log, say just move the cube up? We're gonna be using two functions for this, get actor location and set actor location. So let's call set actor location. The only parameter I care about is a new location here. And if I wanted to know more about these parameters, I'll just go to the respective header file look up the function and we can see the comments here with a more detailed description. I only need a location so I'm going to step back over to our cube file. Location in Unreal Engine is defined as vectors so f vector is a vector 3 finding an X, Y, and Z, it's a struct. So what we want to do here, if this is called every frame, we want to call set actor location and pass in an anonymous F vector object. And the F vector constructor takes in an X, Y, and Z, obviously. So let's call get actor location dot X, get actor location dot Y, dot y and then get actor location dot Z. And if we want this object to move up, we're going to have to add one to Z. So every frame we're incrementing Z by one. And if we come in the engine, compile and hit play, we should see the cube moving up slowly. Thank you for watching my Unreal Engine C++ tutorial on the basics. Next video, we'll be covering the Unreal build tools, players, and game modes. If you enjoyed, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you dislike it, dislike it, and I'll see you in the next one.